Welcome to this SOLIDWORKS tutorial. Today we talk about linear patterns because they help us a lot in the process when creating, for example, a garden table like that, because the patterns are so helpful when we want to design something, when we want to make variants. In this example, I show you how quickly it can be done. For example, when I change the size of the table to 1500, it will keep the linear pattern in here and we can very easily go into the definition. We can say, hey, I want to have smaller spaces in between, so I increase the pattern and we are very fast creating multiple variants of different tables. So this is exactly what we will take a look at today. So we will start from the top here just in one second. So welcome back. We just reset the table to only having one piece in here and we look at the patterns how we can work with them. So first of all when we have here multiple bodies we can draw first of all a sketch to control where the pattern should go through. So I go into the sketch or make a sketch look from top to it and I just draw one simple line with the center line to initialize the direction. We could also take this line but we will use it afterwards for a second variant. So let's close the sketch and just take the linear pattern because that's very limited when it comes to table design like that you will just see right now. So when we go into the pattern, we have multiple directions. At the moment, we just pick one. So that's the direction and we can select features. But in this case, we have also multiple features in this body. So I prefer to take the body in this case. Now it will make the linear pattern in this direction. So we can switch the direction, we can increase the distance that we are quite close to what we want to achieve. So as you see, it's driving over the body and we need to reduce now the amount. And what you also see is we have quite a lot of problems to end up exactly on the right spot. So we would need to calculate here, let's say 85 matches more or less. It goes a bit over it, so we don't care at the moment about this because we will just see another problem. So actually it looks quite okay now, but as soon as I change the dimension of the table like I did it in the intro, then we will directly see that the pattern is not following so I need to recalculate again I need to increase the amount that's why we will not go with the linear pattern we will go with the curve driven pattern because we can distribute it regularly on a long uh, curve and this is what we want to achieve at the moment so I delete this feature and we take a look how it's really done. So let's turn it back to 1000 and look on the table from the top, go back into the sketch because like I told, we need the sketch to make the calculation. First of all, I make a quick simulation because when I go into the start of the body, for example, and I make this distribution of the pattern, you will directly see where it ends up. And that's the most important point to understand. So it's actually more or less the same setting. So you see the last piece is drawn exactly in the middle point of the last one. 
So this is what we want to use as a reference point. We need to go from middle point of the part to the middle point of the part. That's why we need to rethink our spline here. So let's delete this reference. I go more or less into the middle and just roughly also over here into the middle because we need some additional reference lines that everything is all the time connected to each other. So I pick again the central line and when I go in here, pick it again, I can hover over this wooden piece and I directly catch the middle point. So I want to have the center of this line. And now I can stick the line to the middle line of this help spline. So we are all the time in the center. doesn't matter what the size of the piece will be. Now the point is we need to have on this side exactly the same distance like at the bottom. So for this, I like to use again a reference line, which we will pick with a relation to it. So let's jump up here and create the same. Also to this point, at the moment it's still, still variable, but we can pick this line with control this line and say they should be equal. So the same length. And now even this dot here is fully defined. I cannot move it anymore. And that's exactly what we want to achieve. So this will be the distribution line for our wooden piece. And even if we make it more wide, it doesn't matter. It will always keep it in the middle and stop in the middle over here. So that's the preparation, what we need to do. We can close now the sketch, which is just helping sketch. And we can go into the linear pattern to the curve driven patterns. So the direction is directly also the spline. So we need to pick the middle one. Now we go again, not with the features, because we have here, as soon as you have a fillet or a chamfer on it, you can, you would need to select multiple features. So we just go with the body, we pick the body, and as you see, it perfectly stops on the level of the last point because we have it perfectly centered over here. So what we can do now is we can just control the amount, but it will always stop at the last one. And that's exactly what we want to achieve. So we make here a middle space, which we like from the visual perspective. And we accept it and automatically it will change it. So like I mentioned, when we change the size of this wooden piece from 70 to 50, for example, the relation is always to the middle point. So the last wooden piece will also match perfectly fine in this table. And we can go, for example, in this correction into the feature of the pattern. We can just increase the amount and create very fast and updated variant. So the same is with the initial sketch, which is my basic orientation. Also, when I change it here to 1500, the pattern will perfectly match. Just the diff, the distance of the pieces is too high. So we increase the amount of the pieces like we like it. And then we are already done at this point. So now we can use, for example, the mirror feature because the table is perfectly oriented on the middle center line. So let's go into the mirror feature. We want to have the bodies mirrored from the pattern. And this he will not like. So we need to select maybe every single body or we can use the features for the mirroring 
also this he doesn't like so let's pick the middle center line first because I never mirrored something like that so this he doesn't want to take let's try it with the faces so it's also not working so for the mirroring it looks like we need to pick the separate bodies so we just pick one after another and if we change the amount it looks like we need to pick then some additional in this one so we see the mirroring is working at this point so we mirror the table and like that we finish it so like i mentioned when we change the amount of patterns so we go into a square table let's pick 2000 then it will correct everything because we still have the same bodies selected but as soon as we go into this feature with the distribution and we increase the amount then i guess we will pick here more bodies so go into the mirror and just pick in here the last one which are missing now but even then we are quite fast with the orientation and actually now i just have seen the light going up in my head because we always need to think smart and efficient when creating something like that so i just had the idea that we can use the pattern after the mirroring so we just mirror the first part and take then both lines into the pattern so let's quickly try this because correction during the modeling is not something bad it's just a process of optimizing when you work in it so i go back in the history so i deactivate the pattern in the first round we pick the mirror feature and as a face for mirroring we take the right plane we pick this body up here we mirror it and now we can take it into the pattern to be much faster and smarter on the way so first it will be missed i go back into the pattern i select the body selection box pick the body and now it's fully linked to each other so when i decrease or increase the amount both of them will go in one line and everything is perfectly fine so i can close it i can go again in the initial sketch i can even increase it now to 2500 everything runs together in parallel which is very nice to see and also in here when the spaces are too big we can go now step by step into it increase or decrease the spaces and increase the amount of them and update the table according to our needs and our wishes so we just found the smart way of linking it together and always go with this path so that's actually all for today. Thanks a lot for listening and 